Uh, welcome everybody to the very first CB Rifles podcast. This is season zero, episode one. I am CB, the tournament organizer for CB Rifles. Um, and I'm very, very excited to start this podcast series with you. Um, I'm not the size of about the name yet, so we might change it. Uh, any suggestions, let me know. Um, but we're just going to start today. Uh, we have some guests as well. We got uh, Bluntcast and my lord from the community team who are going to kick us off with their ideas about the future for community tournaments like this. And I have my very, very, very special co-host with me, Corto. Unfortunately, without a face, but if you know the man, you know you love him uh, because he has been organizing one of the very, very, very best um, community tournaments so far called Core Tournament. Uh, all the team captains absolutely think he's amazing and I think so too, he's helped me out a lot. So Corto, thank you so much for helping me out in this one as well. Um, please introduce yourself. Um, where are you from? What do you do? And why do you like to organize tournaments so much? Hello, everyone. And thank you, CB, uh, to invite me uh, for the podcast. And uh, but, so I have, um, I am the, the hot player of uh, <laughs> Conqueror's Blade. Uh, I play in uh, March um, 19. So uh, it's long. And uh, uh, I like the the game like this, and uh, I play ten years uh, on the Dynasty Warrior, Dynasty Empire, yeah. and a uh, lot of games like this. Yeah. And um, at the beginning, I find uh, the the esports and the tournament uh, competition, is, I think, is very important for this game. And I try to do something to to create an uh, event of this. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Thank you so much, man, for organizing all that. Did you actually have any experience with tournaments before uh, Conqueror's Blade? Uh, before Conqueror's Blade, no. Yeah. Only I, I like to see to look the the competition on uh, another game, mm -hmm. like uh, it was a storm or lore or something like that. Oh yes. But um, to organize a competition, no, oh, it's the I first see. time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Epic. Yeah, I've organized a few uh, tabletop uh, tournaments, like do you know what, like Warhammer and games like this um but just really small ones for like 10 people or whatever so yeah it's fun um yeah so this is my first as well also my first podcast is this your first podcast oh yeah yeah okay yeah. okay okay <laughs> and also in english i mean that's even harder <laughs> oh yeah yeah all right we'll just see how it goes i guess um yeah so we are going to talk about uh the matches and the standings of course for the cb rifles um it's very exciting right now uh, so we're definitely going to start with that in just a few moments. Um, then we also have the interview to show you. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well. And we'll talk about how we as tournament organizers think about like the competition, the tournaments, the teams, and how we hope it goes in the future. Um, so let's kick things off with uh, the standings right now. And I think they are really exciting and good to look at. So I'll get them on the screen. Corto, you can see them as well your own um, and I'll just talk you through it. So let's start with Pool A. So in Pool A we saw Pondgard uh, tying Surf Slayers on Dosso Fort last Sunday in a very exciting match. If you haven't watched it, go to CB Rifles YouTube uh, and rewatch the game for sure. Um, it left Pondgard in the lead with an undefeated record of 3 wins and 1 tie for a total of 10 points. Cl followed closely by undefeated Jacked Ultras with 8 points, 2 wins and 2 ties. On seven points, we have Surf Slayers and Blame Elias and Holy Crusaders, all with two wins, one ties, and one loss. So those five teams are still competing for the top four places, and the top four places will get them in the winners' record for next season. And the bottom four places uh, on each pool will go to the losers' record. So you definitely want to be in the top four places if you want to make it to like the win at the end. Um, in Pool A, we also have Odin's Legion and Holy Crusaders, both having one, taken one win against Triarchy. And Triarchy is still without a win, but they have been improving a lot. They actually managed to like, put up a good defense against Blame Elias last Sunday. So these three teams seem to be battling for the fifth place. Although if any of these teams manage to pick up three wins, which is very unlikely, they could still contest the fourth place to uh, fifth place, or fourth place, maybe even to end a better winners pool for next season. Um, so, what do you think about the standings, uh, Corto? If you look at it, like you know some of the teams, of course, from Core Tournament. Yeah, yeah, we know uh, Pongard, Jack Ultra, and uh, Serslayer. Mm -hmm. Serslayer, 
the whole team uh, and Jack Ultra it's a, a new team yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, they are in the, the last uh, edition yeah. and Pongard and Sir Slayer is the whole team and uh, they, they know the, the competition on the Conqueror yeah definitely like those teams if, uh, yeah everybody knows those teams right and um, blame Alias actually a lot of guys from Legendary or Lama Land so they, they also have a bit of experience in the in the tournament scene and then the other teams are pretty new Triarchy has played in core tournament as well I played there for Triarchy we played in the first round but uh, yeah I got defeated quite quickly <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so definitely interesting right um, was Jack Ultras did they play in the core tournament as well were they the first to uh, I can't remember. Who? Jack the Ultras? Did they play in the core tournament? This, this, this yes, 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 right? yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, three, um, I forget. Triarchy plays the last edition, mm -hmm. and Jack Ultra plays uh, the second edition. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the one before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think Jack the Ultras seem really strong right now. Like they've been, uh, yeah, they're still undefeated as well. Um, yeah, so pretty strong from them. Um, and looking at the schedule is pretty exciting as well. Uh, I will show you. On, on the if you're watching of course i'll show you the matches uh, so we still have three more rounds to go and something that's really interesting is that um bond guard is going to play chocolate paladins on this sunday and that is an na match so it's going to be really exciting um, and it also means that if chocolate paladins wins against uh, bond guard like anything can happen because that means that chocolate paladins goes to 10 points uh bond guard suddenly and like took a beating and is still on 10 points but all the other teams can catch up and also get to 11 or 10 points so then we definitely have still have like five teams competing for for the first four places but also for first place and um, if chocolate paladins do lose then they will most likely be out of the race for first place but they are still in the race for fourth place um, and chocolate paladins will then face trike and blame Elias to finish the season blame Elias is one of the other contenders so the last week is going to be very important and uh, round six we'll see Pondegaard face Jacked and Blame Elias uh, versus Surf Slayer and this will also be very important for the top four round and then the last round is like I said going to hinge on Chocolate Paladins versus Blame Elias as the other top four contenders will face three seemingly weaker teams from Pool A in the last round so Holy Crusaders are basically like the most important matches in this week and in two weeks and then all the other teams just have to make sure they they win against the lower tier teams and then also try to beat of course the the higher tier teams when they face them yeah so it's going to be exciting like which match do you think is going to be uh, uh, interesting to watch on this weekend aside from chocolate paladins and pond guard what do i say Pongard is always uh, uh, appreciate to see it. Yeah. And uh, but um, I like to to see some an, uh, another match like uh, uh, Holy Crusader and Blame Elias mm -hmm. because it's uh, you can see an, a new team and uh, another gameplay and uh, I, and uh, it's so fun the cow a chaotic game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, they can be it's very like, fun. Yeah. And it's also a, a relative new map. They play on Sun City. And um, I believe that I, I rewatched some games on Sun, Sun City. And I believe the only times that teams played on Sun City was in the core tournament. Um, core tournament two, I think it was. Yeah, we yes. played one time. And, yeah. and, um, but uh, the team don't choose from the, the team leader. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we play one or two times. Yeah. They, they like this. They don't like this map <laughs> yeah not really i know but i i, I really liked uh, watching that those games though uh, yeah. uh, what about you did you like it on sun city um but i i think it's interesting on, on sun city it's uh, uh, for me we must fight differently like what we do on the uh, on siege mm -hmm. and uh, the the little uh, castle near the last point it's determinant and very important yeah. to, to control the, the era. Yeah, true. Totally. Like, yeah, I really like it though. Yeah, it's very interesting. We'll, we'll see how the teams do it. Of course, it's also without artillery. Um, 
So, so that's something that teams like that also changes quite a bit because there's a few points on the map which can be like totally destroyed by artillery, but now that's not possible, right? So, yeah, that's going to be fun. All right, uh, let's talk about the next pool then, right? Um, I'll bring it up again and see where I have it. Here, there we go. Group B. So in Group B, um, we also have a race going on. Uh, that's for sure. Um, it's a bit more decided in Pool B, but it's definitely still close. Um, so we seem to have uh, We Are Clowns still undefeated, followed by Rose, also undefeated, but with one tie, Eden and Slavs. Eden and Slavs have both lost against We Are Clowns uh, once. So this means that they seem to be out of contention for the first place. However, in this next Sunday, We Are Clowns and Rose uh, play again, or sorry, Eden plays against. Um, Eden plays against Rose, we'll get in it in a bit. Um, but if Rose wins against We Are Clowns, then suddenly uh, every, all top four teams will have lost once uh, and then everyone can still get first place, basically. So it's still very exciting there. And um, Rose actually had for, has tied their first round match against Love and Devotion, which may, they might regret like really badly at the end of the season. So kudos to Love and Devotion as a new team for taking a game off of them. Um, yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And if we look at the schedule, like I said, um, let's get it up on the screen as well. So in this pool, uh, the most interesting uh, team to follow for the standings is actually Rose. Um, I'll see if I can get my thing on it. Uh, let's see. Rose, yeah, here we have it. So in round four, Rose is going to play Oh no, round five, Rose is going to play Eden. So Eden is really good, we know that team. And then round five, uh, round six, Rose plays against We Are Clowns. This is basically for the first place. And then in round seven, Rose plays against Slavs. So Slavs still has to play three matches against the top four teams. And it means that if Rose play wins against We Are Clowns, then Slavs versus Rose could be about the first place but also any of the other matches. So it's, it's really interesting. Like anything can happen still in that round. Um, what do you think about it, uh, Quarto? Ah, he's, um, we have in the middle of the, of the season. So yeah, nothing is determined for the middle of the classman mm -hmm. of the, of the ranked. So well, it's, it's, they must to do the, the best. Yeah. And show us uh, what they can do. Yeah, yeah, true. Absolutely true. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, I don't know if you've watched any of the, the map from Pool B or like the, the matches. Um, but I, I'm really impressed with Slavs. They're from EU2. They are a really new team to the tournament scene. And we don't, I don't think we've seen them anywhere. Um, oh. But they seem to be really strong. They are methodical. Same for Rose. Has Rose. I think Rose is also the team called Kitten. And they have played in the core tournament. Um, so, yeah. No, no one does an M, but not this M. The... Yeah, the kitten. Uh, they've played ah, kitten. kitten. Yes, yes. Kitten. yeah, kitten. Yeah. kitten. yeah. Yeah, so I think that Rose is partly the same team as Kitten. Um, so there's a, there's a good experience there, but they, they are really, really good. They destroyed Sivos last uh, Sunday and uh, they, they seem strong as well. But they, yeah, so we'll have to see. And then um, on the bottom of Pool B, we have Love and Devotion, Seafos and Banished. And Banished is also still without any win. Uh, Seafos and Love and Devotion have been doing okay. They both got a win. And Love and Devotion also have the tie. Um, if Love and Devotion or Seafos actually get like two or three upset wins against the top teams, then they could still make it to fourth place. But it's going to be pretty hard for them as they seem to be a bit weaker than the top four teams. So yeah, very, very interesting, right? I'm excited for these matches, that's for sure. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, cool. So, um, talking about uh, something else in the tournament, uh, next week we're going to invite uh, some of the casters as well. Um, we've been blessed with a lot of casters like English, French, uh, Russian, Turkish, Spanish. Uh, so, really happy with it. Um, uh, we actually even have more room for more casters. So, if someone wants to cast some games, and has experience in it, let me know as well. Um, yeah, so next week we'll talk to the casters. Um, 
what is your experience, uh, Corto? You casted some games yourself for court tournaments? Uh, yeah, it's not my uh, my mainly role, mm -hmm. but uh, I I am with the, with the with the French caster. Yeah. And uh, we are many. We are four. <laughs> <laughs> We, we everyone talk a lot and uh, we make a lot of uh, of funny. It's funny. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Casting is so fun, man. It, it like would you rather play or would you rather cast the game if you could choose? Me? Oh, I know. I prefer to cast. Yeah, uh, right. I'm not really a, a very good player. Uh, I have the vision, the tactics, and the knowledge of the game, but. Mm. Uh, I'm not a good player. I'm, I'm too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> You're humble. Uh, I, like I prefer cast and uh, organize uh, the fair game. Yeah, exactly. Make sure it's fair. Yeah, that's something you do really well, by the way. Like making sure it's fair Thank for you. everyone. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, actually, yeah. I also like casting is so much fun. I really love playing, and I, I still believe I'm good enough. I'm not old enough for it. But, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I maybe I should switch to purely casting and uh, organizing tournaments as well. <laughs> All right. Um, should we uh, check it out? What the uh, community managers um, Bluntcast and My Lord had to say to me uh, earlier today. Um, so we'll show you the, the interview, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. You and you can watch it and enjoy. Okay, so welcome, Bloodcast and My Lord. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast in this very first interview for the CB Rifles uh, podcast as well. Um, it's a pleasure having you, and I really hope you enjoy this interview and also everything that we are creating with the community right now. Um, can you just talk about yourself a little bit, like what you do as a community manager, which both of you are? And I'm also really curious where your name comes from, like the Bloodcast and My Lord, so just start that up right up. I'll, I'll, I'll let my lord start with this one. All right, perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's nice to meet you in Pleasure Church. I'm very sure I'm very glad to be here. So I'm Lord. I'm the French community manager. I'm a long time CB player as well. Uh, so our job as community manager is uh, to do the media between players and the, the enterprise, the, the company mostly, especially in terms of feedback. So players tend to think that sometimes we are the support mm -hmm. we are not uh it's two different teams so it's our job actually to share messages from players to the company and from the company to the players so we are basically we're the messenger when there's an important news to share to the players about you know like a, a delay a, a patch or something it's our job to make sure that all players are aware about the upcoming event upcoming news and when players have something strong important to tell it's our job to make sure that all boss and the rest of the staff is aware about this so that that's like a big chunk of our job uh, make sure the message get properly carried Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we do take care of our community through various different events uh, that we prepare ourselves, that we manage and carry ourselves. Uh, could be some community contests, like screenshot contests or that sort of stuff. Community streams, by example, that we're having on a weekly basis. Uh, so to keep players entertained beyond the simple Conqueror's Blade game. Uh, and that's yeah that's big biggest part of it nah, i'm not sure if i forget something when <laughs> cast oh there's there's some there's some admin oh, and, and we, we work sometime actually oh you yeah do. Sometimes, oh, wow. we do, sometimes we do some work there's yeah, yeah. there's lots of uh lots of reports and spreadsheets and documents mm. we we <laughs> we we're the sort of bridge between the players and, and the team so when we get a lot of feedback about something we typically have to then collate it into a report um we then write up all the feedback we can we can sort of try and consolidate mm. you know, we'll, we'll collect hundreds and hundreds of players feedback on something and we'll try and consolidate it into a very concise and uh tightly focused document on what we actually would like to see addressed um and so we do a lot of those we do lots of weekly reports and uh analytics looking at how we're doing looking at what needs to what needs to change what needs to be looked at what we can adjust um yeah it's it's really it's a very interesting role because we are you know we're both obviously we're, we're active players of the game we play it on stream and off stream at least i do i know i, I feel like <laughs> i feel like we both do um we 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 are obviously active fans of the game so mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of 
enthusiasm and passion for the game there as well. So when things are right, we're obviously incredibly excited. And when things need to be improved or, or need to be fixed, we're also exceptionally excited to do that and make sure that we're like, fix it. And we're like, we're very <laughs> excited to make sure that everything gets resolved. Yeah, exactly. So, Excellent. Yeah, okay. it's it's a it's a great position to be in. Yeah, I imagine, and uh, f very interesting to hear more about the work that you actually have to put in. Because uh, obviously, being part of a community, I know that we as a community, like I feel that we love the game so much. There's so much involvement from all the players, and you can see it uh, by how much we critic criticize the game sometimes as well. But it is it is because people stay in this game and they they love mm -hmm. it, it for what it is and the uniqueness of it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so it's great to hear that you share that and, and put the work into it to, to make it even better. Um, and then sp more specifically about your role in the like the tournament team, because there's been a few tournaments uh, created by the community, right? the R tournament, the core tournament, um, that those have all been great. I've been very happy to be part of those as well. Um, what is your role in, in, in those kind of tournaments and leagues uh, so far? So we typically, um, I mean, I've never competed. I don't know if the Lord's ever competed in a tournament. Um, <laughs> I would we, not be any, I would not be good enough. Uh, so, well, our tournament is a while back, so uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't remember it, but I never took part. I, I, I don't think I'd, I even took part of the ARI tournament back in the days but yeah uh, typically for the core tournament and for hopefully the rivals league uh, we provide communication and promotion of the event so we since it's community tournament we don't we can't and we don't really want to take part to uh, the organization aspect of mm -hmm. the, the event because that's not that's beyond all prerogatives uh, but we will gladly provide communication and promotion to make sure that as many players as possible hear about the event and potentially watch it watch the games and follow up the event throughout the different stages. So using our official social media, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Discord, obviously Discord, mm -hmm. uh, we make sure that everyone knows about it. Uh, and that's the biggest help that we can provide to such community event, I believe. Yeah, yeah, totally. I really appreciate it as well for Leak, at least. And I know that Quarto and Artman also appreciate it so far. And of course, there's also the prize support, right? Just before this interview, um, I put out the message on the Discord about the prize support that you guys were able to to get for the Sea Rivals League. So thanks a lot for that as well. I know the players and are also to, always to make sure that it. people subscribe, subscribe to yeah. the tournament. Yeah, true yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's always a big help. Um, how do you uh, see the community right now and where do you like to see it going in the future, in the nearby future. Let's, let's keep it there. <laughs> Where I'd love to see the community going is exponentially expanding. I mm. want every single person on the planet to play Conqueror's Blade. It's the best game ever. So everyone should be playing it. But sure. um, I second, I second of, this. Yeah, yeah. Right, there we go. Every, we're all in agreement. Um, so I, I, in terms of where I'd like the community to go, of course, we want to get more people. But I, I have really appreciated seeing the community acknowledge and appreciate the adjustments that we're doing we're trying to be more transparent we're making these adjustments and we're building towards making conqueror's blade the best version of itself that it can be um but i'm also really appreciative when i see members of the community just helping each other out because mm -hmm. conqueror's blade is a, is a very complex game there's so much depth to it there's so much um nuance there's so many weapons so many units so many ways to play the game um, that I really appreciate when I see new and old players helping each other out and saying, oh, you know, I, I what, sh what would you recommend for this? And, and players saying, oh, um, if you've just salvaged a bunch of stuff, you should try crafting a new weapon. And this one's great. Keep this one. That's a good craft. You've got very lucky mm -hmm. with that. So things like that, just seeing that positivity and that encouragement is great. And it's something that I want to really encourage. Um, but I also love seeing the competitive side of Conqueror's Blades just being so present and seeing so many people so constantly committed to it, you know, seeing mm. lots of familiar names and team names coming up again and again. Yeah, true. To, you know, I think to myself, wow, these guys are so hooked on this <laughs> that, that they, they cannot step away from it. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Yeah. Um, we want to see both new players feeling like they're confident enough to take part in these tournaments and try it out and try and tackle these, this old guard of, of existing players, but also love to see 
uh, veterans of the game just keep coming back for more every single time a tournament presents itself and a new challenge. Um, it's great. It's really, really great. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. My lord, any remarks from you as well? Uh, no, because actually Blendcast covered uh, also <laughs> the competitive aspect of the game, mm -hmm. so I think everything has been mostly covered, but I, I totally second those affirmations. Like, you know, it's uh, Conqueror's Blade is a deep, complex game, and we know that sometimes it can be harsh for a new player to step in and to try the game. I mean, you can trade for a couple of hours, okay, it's nice, and then you just understand that there's thousands of different possibilities. We have, I think, 80 five, six different units with different veterancy lines, with doctrines, uh, weapon classes and stuff. So it can be quite difficult to keep up with the game and how to get good at Conqueror's Blade. But hopefully, uh, our community has always been extremely helpful and glad to incorporate new players. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it works. Sometimes it's more difficult and complicated, like in Territory Wars, by example, where you tend to have a, a clear distinction between uh, hardcore houses and casual houses so it can be sometimes tough to actually mix the different populations of players but most of the time uh, it's really great to see that new players are being welcomed and provided with a lot of help and advices from core veteran players uh, so looking forward to increase and see the development of the, the competitive aspect of the game, especially through uh, community events uh, like the Rival Leagues, by, by the Rivals League, by example. Mm -hmm. We provide the official CBL, which is not every season, but uh, let's say that uh, maybe two editions a year, something like this. But of course, it's not enough if you really want to have some sort of real active competitive scene. Mm -hmm. And the core tournament and the rivals are extremely helpful to help the game uh, growing in terms of competitive audience and activity. Yeah, interesting. Uh, this is something that I would like to go dive deeper into as well, because the, the CBL is, of course, the, the official tournament that you've been hosting for a couple of years now as, as the My Games part of the, of the game. Um, and I know that the teams that you mentioned, Blunt, because they are all been, have been really excited about My Games picking up a tournament like this. Um, I know Frontier has been doing it for a, a bit longer, I believe. How, how do you see it? You already mentioned like it, it, it can live next to each other, right? The CBL and mm -hmm. the rifles and the quarto. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm really excited by, I mean, I, I don't know any more than, than anyone else does about it, but looking at our custom lobby feature, obviously mm -hmm. that was something that the community was very enthused by. Once we introduced that, that's been something that the community have really latched onto. I, I continue to hope, and it's something that I, you know, I keep pushing for, but it's, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure the whole community team, we all, we all agree that it's something that we hope gets even more nuance and more customization that hopefully uh, down the line i don't know when it would be mm -hmm. but we would reach a point where these custom lobbies could be potential for really interesting game modes with specific rule sets and we could you know it could be everyone has to take nothing but ranged units or <laughs> and, and see these different kind of tournaments to see how players would adapt to those new competitive rule sets and see what what's out there and i think that could be very interesting as well but i really have enjoyed the community tournaments that we've seen so far and so it's very uh refreshing and reassuring to see that that, that community uh tournament angle is still going strong and it's something that we love to support and it's exciting to see uh what what's on the horizon it's exciting to think about what could be coming yeah totally i think i've i've talked with the coffee field gaming interview as well about like the the perspective i see for the for the cbo rivals league in the future um yeah you, you can dream big with this one definitely especially once the community starts mm -hmm. growing it's it can be epic yeah all right maybe to conclude this interview i would love to hear about you guys uh, about the the upcoming matches as well we are now halfway through the tournament we've just had round four finished we've got three more rounds to go and then a finals for first second and third place um which will be on the first week of april if i'm correct uh sorry first week of may because 24th of april is the last week of the uh, of the league officially um i know my lord that you've been watching a few of the match matches uh, which teams have you seen and what what, what did you think of those uh, well, th there's no, uh, unless I, I'm doing a big mistake, there's no properly French team in the rivals mm -hmm. yet. Uh, but exactly. we have some <laughs> we, ha we have some core French players in, uh, by example, Eden, 
so I, I know that you no know, watching Eden is always you know that uh, it will always be good games so mm -hmm. actually it's a safe value in terms of entertainment uh actually the Eden versus clips that I watched uh, two weeks ago was extremely interesting like uh, the, the, the two teams gave their everything uh, on I think it was wall fort and a final push on the, the base point was absolutely amazing that's what you want to see on your casual games but you don't because your team sucks <laughs> as we all know <laughs> but uh, so yeah I watched this one and also I really do like point guard the NA team uh, mm. And that's actually something extremely amazing with rivals. It's much more helpful for any American players to participate to a competitive scene. Uh, that's an issue we had, especially with the CBL, that we need to find a common um, hour for everyone to mm. participate. And this hour is most of the time based on European time. Uh, so it might be difficult sometimes to have North American players and teams to participate or they can participate, but you know, it'd be extremely difficult for them because they need to not work. They need to take a day. And the rivals is on the weekend it means that they can completely participate to such events and they can finally enjoy the competitive aspect of the game without feeling that you know they they need to do a lot of sacrifice to be there mm -hmm. be present so that's what's that's something really really nice with the, the rival zig and pong guard is doing extremely good uh so yeah yeah, yeah i was gonna say that yeah. was that was my pick was i was very <laughs> intrigued to see the uh pond guard against yek dultras or jack dultras mm. uh because they're both really really strong teams so far they've done really really well so i'm interested to see how they're both doing really really well in the in the standing so far yeah, so i'm totally. interested to see who comes out on top when they when they <laughs> clash yeah so yeah exactly well I, I don't know watch. if you've actually checked the schedule for this this weekend but you're spot on because uh, we've got eden versus rose which is a very very important match because if yep. um rose wins they are still in fight in the fight for first place against we are clowns and pond guard plays against uh, chocolate paladins and they are both NA teams and uh, Chocolate Paladins basically has to win to make sure that they get fourth place for the winner bracket for next season. So um, both are going to be really exciting to watch. So, you know, thanks a lot for hyping hi hi those matches even more. Yeah, totally. All right, yeah, perfect. Forward. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you would like to add or say to the guys who are watching this CB Rivals podcast as well? Um, well, I think we want to thank you for for putting this together making this happen uh the I want to thank the community as well for both participating and tuning in uh watching the games being active and, and taking part in it because that's obviously that's what makes conqueror's blade so incredible it, it, it without without you guys it wouldn't be wouldn't be possible to to make this magic happen so we really appreciate it and we really appreciate you taking the time out to make this all put this all together organize this whole thing and and get it all going it's it's a real pleasure um to see it thriving and, and here's hoping this this is the first first of many exactly everything crossed that we'll see much more much more competition like this in the near future um yeah excellent excited already yeah thank you yeah. so much yeah <laughs> uh, th th thank you a lot for your time and effort you put for making such event uh i should i should say thank you to Corto more often as yes. well <laughs> <laughs> i'll pass it along uh, to him as well yeah yeah he, he deserves it uh, yeah 100 percent so yeah thank you a lot for time and effort and looking forward for the upcoming games and yeah yeah uh, best of luck to all the teams taking part so it's going to be it's going to be really exciting to see who who makes it out on top now. See who uh, who emerges, uh, who, who's in the top four of each bracket. So exactly. still lots to play for. It is, it is. All right, thank you so much, and I hope to see you soon next time as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Sounds great. Right. So that's the interview. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Uh, what uh, stood out for you uh, about their uh, their responses? Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, It's a long time I communicate with my game, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's uh, it's a different uh, person because before I communicate with Drew and Drew uh, is a general 
community manager and they do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, and now uh, in the in the last edition, I communicate on the with broadcast. Yep. But uh, it's new as a, when you start to to manage a tournament. It's uh, new on the community and on, on the game, so it's the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, for me, I, I prefer to say I wait and see. Uh, I want to see, but uh, I hope uh, they they support a lot of uh, of event and different uh, organizations. But uh, the, uh, I think the problem is with the uh, you, when you do an event when you organize an event on the, um, the live server, mm -hmm. it's because it's totally independent. Yeah. And uh, but what you do on the tournament server, it's not the same. And uh, my game, I have a, um, uh, they, they have a, a calendar. A schedule with another mm -hmm. event of uh, utility of the tournament server, mm -hmm. so it's more complicated. And uh, I don't think they can manage to have a, um, a lot. Of, actually, I don't think they can manage to have a lot of event mm -hmm. on the tournament. So it's a problem. Yeah. But with the time, it's just the beginning. And with the time and uh, with practice and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of player to to try to organize this. We, we, we can do it. It's not a problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Like, um, I know that there's only a, a few players who have played on a tournament server, right? Only those who played CBL or core tournament or RE tournament. That's like maybe three, four hundred players in total. Um, and yeah, it's very different playing on a tor in a tournament server. It's stable. Yes. That's, that's good. But it's also uh, only 700, 700 leadership. Uh, most of the time, no doctrines. Uh, you can change the veterancy lines, but it's, it also takes a lot of time for every player to change all the outfits, all the stats, everything um, as for you as a tournament organizer to set up the whole tournament server. Like there's so many, uh, so no, many things, no, right? Uh, um, no, actually, um, from at the beginning, yes, it's mm -hmm. very difficult. The most, part, the most difficult part is uh, to manage the ID and the access mm -hmm. yeah, to sure. the server. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning is difficult. No, and uh, with the, um, uh, a few time, they, they change the server, mm -hmm. and uh, they change the tournament server. And now they can record the setup of the server. So every so the, the access with the ID is simple, mm -hmm. and uh, the setup of the server is more stable oh, nice. than before. So yeah, with time, uh, step by step. Uh, we go on the, the good organization and the, to to to, fa to facilitate. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, to facilitate. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Like, at least you can uh, hear from their responses that, um, or at least like you can hear from their responses that they see that the competitive side of like Conqueror's Blade is growing. Right, more and more teams and players want to participate. Um, it's also why CB Rifles now is such a, such a big success already um, because core tournament was already amazing and our tournament was really good and the teams were already like excited to play in even more tournaments and new teams want to join. Like it's all ramping up, right? To, to even more and even better. Yeah, so I just think it's really, really good right now. Well, it's, it's, it's going to, to a good place. Uh, what I think is interesting with uh, interesting with the, um, the CB rival and uh, the live server, mm -hmm. you play with the hero uh, with your hero um, setup. Uh, you know your your weapon yeah. and the bonus statistic on the weapon mm -hmm. and the with your statistic and uh, and with the, the craft uh, what we say uh, the armor. Yeah. Um, what is the name? The build. What is the name? Oh, I wouldn't know, like the, your extra armor stats and uh, toughness stats and everything, yeah. Yes, everything. <laughs> and, uh, and this is, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And the, what is the difference on the, the live server and the month server? But um, me, I like this, yeah, <laughs> to, yeah. to play with, with, only with the hero. For with the unit and uh, your, your barrack mm -hmm. and the domain and, and the artillery, something like that. Yeah. It must be on the like uh, like the tournament server is good, yeah. but for the hero, 
So life server is good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy that the custom lobby is actually pretty stable. Like even if we play like multiple matches at the same time, it's, it's still good, right? Um, I mean, everybody knows that there has been some problem, problems with the servers. Um, back, back a few months ago and even now sometimes quite often. So yeah, it, it's just really good. It's getting better. And we already talked about it a little bit before, but uh, we also hope to see more customization in a custom lobby. Right, yeah. where you could yeah. like change more settings, like the number of players or, or anything really. Um, the, the part, huh? I, I remember to to discuss with Drew uh, a long time ago mm -hmm. at the beginning, and uh, he said me the solution is to have a, a custom lobby, uh, a good custom lobby. Huh? Yeah. So <laughs> <it's enough. laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and you can see it now that there is a custom lobby. Like how much comes out of it? It's yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll just keep pushing them to like improve the custom lobby. Like it would be also really nice to like have a customization where you can say a uh, maximum of 700 leadership, right? Because that would make it more of a fair tournament, I think, because so many players have 780 leadership and others only have to 710 and it makes a big difference. Um, yes. Yeah. So yeah, there's a few things you might want to take out. Like for example, you can uh, say no, you no unit doctrines on the custom lobby. So there is already some customization possible. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there one day, one day. <laughs> All right. um, then let's talk a bit more about um, uh, what, I, what I asked uh, the community manager as well about the future of the competitive side of Conquest Blade. Um, what do you think about like what they talked about and what your ideas are for yeah for Conquest Blade and a competitive scene in the future and also specifically core tournament of course. Uh, can you repeat? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. There was a lot together. So, what, what are was? what are your ideas about um, the competitive future of Conquest Blade? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What's um... What we see and uh, in the the different and the uh, the competitive event, a competitive match and uh, the normal game mm -hmm. like Siege, is we see only some units and are, are used. Mm, so yeah. um, I think they they need to to think we have a different player and they have. Uh, we need to have a different game. We need a different size of the game. Mm. Uh, you are the player, the, um, uh, what we say, the, um, uh, when you play no, no fun. Um, a casual or competitive? Uh, oh, casual. Casual, we, yeah. you, you have a casual player, mm. and they play, they, they just want to, to kick, to hit, and they run everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, it's funny. So, and so for them, we need to have a lot of units and play everything, mm -hmm. but they, they need to think that uh, some units are very impact in the game mm -hmm. and uh, to like uh, a Forte Braccio and no, not Forte Braccio, um, uh, the Bomber, uh, the Flamethrower, ah, yes. and uh, um, uh, the Gunner, you know, um, uh, the Shenji or the Tercio? No, 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 the big, uh, the, the boomer. Ah, the Falconetti, uh, yeah, with the cannons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there are, there are units with a big impact in the game. Yeah, totally. And uh, it's interesting, but with the time, we, we must have a lot and lot of units. Mm -hmm. If you think that it's a game in the two or three years, and they need to anticipate this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I also, th yeah, I agree with you. Like, um, if I think about the, the amount of units that are in the game already, um, it's quite a lot and I, I'm like, how are they going to keep increasing the uh, yeah, the units, right? You see it in games like League of Legends as well. I used to play that a lot when there was like 50 or 60 champions maybe. And now there's, I don't know how many. I, I, I stopped like keeping playing it and I'm only watching it now sometimes. And there's so many new stuff that you think, oh, this is good. This is becoming crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's a big game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it can become too much, but uh, we'll see. I hope, just hope they keep balancing it out. They've been doing more balancing lately. I hope they continue doing that. That would be really cool. Now, is there talking about it? Um, have you noticed anything about the meta in the tournament so far? 
Um, for that? me, uh, a meta must be uh, controlled by mm -hmm. the developer, so they need to, you know, it, it's like a MOBA. Mm -hmm. uh, in a MOBA, the, the, the game developer changes sometimes uh, some hero to uh, um, too much strong, yeah. but it's normal to, to, to modify the uh, to modify the game and uh, and use some units sometime and uh, is it, this is a meta and uh, the developer need to 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 know this and to to control it mm -hmm. this with the time yeah, with uh, some modification on some units sometime and uh, yeah. it's very difficult huh? it's very noisy yeah, of course yes yes i mean it's not easy to balance a game like this for sure yeah yeah and uh looking at the tournament maybe also core tournament and cb rifles from the matches you've watched um how do you like the meta so far like units that you see um, me uh, yeah fine yeah i like the meta because you have some fun. and it's different on different map because mm -hmm. you have some maps with cavalry yeah. and map with the cavalry is no good and uh so we need to have more map, but uh, <laughs> to have different gameplay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. And, uh, but um, uh, and the, the the banning of unit is mm -hmm. a good system uh, to to uh, to improve the tactic, the strategy yeah, of the game. Absolutely, yeah, very true. Uh, that's that's one thing I really enjoyed in core tournament as well. That I think that was the first tournament where you could ban units. I mean. Yeah, it just makes the game so different because I saw a few games where teams even banned like Modao, which are like the number one meta unit basically. And then it changes the like the whole dynamic of the of the unit selection and all that. It's so so interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's scientific. And you have sometimes you can have a couple uh, like a map, uh, some specifically unit on specifically map mm -hmm. and to, to break this couple uh, it changed the game yeah exactly <laughs> game. yeah especially the the mm -hmm. like the impactful units you mentioned like the falconetti and flamers yeah um, yeah you see those units banned so often because they can just make or break a map basically for the defense or the attack no. yes yes yeah true true all right very interesting topics um we'll talk more about the meta probably next week uh, we might get a uh, pion in uh and definitely one of the casters for the for, for the podcast so let's find out more about the, what they think about the meta and the units and all that for uh, next week um for now should we wrap it up yeah yeah okay so right. yeah this was good i think I, I really liked it for the first time uh, let, let's let's keep it to this um so thank you so much corto for co-hosting it i think it went really well um, I hope everybody is going to enjoy it. Uh, let us know in any comment or chat or Discord that you can find. Uh, make sure to follow the CB Rifles YouTube or subscribe, even better, uh, to keep watching all the, all the games. Uh, go watch all the streams and the casters uh, that are available on Sunday, but also any of the other days. Uh, let's make Conquest Blade amazing um, and just get involved. And uh, that's it for us for today. I uh, hope you have fun, enjoy playing the game and keep coming back. Thank you.